Once upon a time in the vast, resplendent realm of heaven, where light and harmony reigned supreme, an unprecedented disturbance began to take shape. A formidable and ancient force so powerful, the great dragon known as the Devil and Satan, rallied his dark legions. His intent was nothing less than rebellion against the divine order. On the other side stood the stalwart Archangel Michael, a beacon of celestial might and unwavering loyalty. He was accompanied by an army of angels, all radiating with an intense and pure light, ready to defend the sanctity of heaven. As the tension mounted, the once serene and tranquil expanse of heaven transformed into a battlefield of unimaginable proportions. The two forces faced each other, the air thick with anticipation. Michael and his angels, armored in shimmering golden light, stood resolute and unyielding. Opposite them, the dragon and his angels, cloaked in darkness and malice, prepared for an epic confrontation. With a thunderous roar that echoed through the heavens, the battle commenced. Michael, wielding a magnificent sword of light, led the charge. His angels followed, their wings creating a brilliant storm of luminescence as they surged forward. The dragon, his scales glistening with an eerie, sinister glow, met Michael head-on, his own followers diving into the fray with fierce determination. The encounter was cataclysmic. Light and darkness intertwined in a violent clash, the sheer power of their conflict shaking the very foundations of heaven. Michael's sword sliced through the shadows, its brilliance searing the dark angels of the dragon, the devil. Yet, the dragon fought back with ferocious tenacity, his claws and fangs flashing as he sought to overthrow the celestial defenders. The angels on both sides were also locked in combat, their cries of valor and defiance reverberating through the cosmic battlefield. Each clash of swords and each burst of energy created shockwaves that rippled across the heavens. The ground beneath them, though ethereal, seemed to tremble with the intensity of their struggle. It was a sight both awe-inspiring and terrifying, a testament to the immense forces at play. Despite their fierce resistance, the dragon and his followers began to falter. The light of Michael and his angels proved too powerful, too righteous. Gradually, the tide of battle turned. The dragon's once formidable forces started to break, their dark forms being driven back by the relentless onslaught of heavenly light. Michael, with a final, powerful stroke, struck the dragon down, his sword of light piercing through the ancient serpent's defenses. Defeated and humiliated, the dragon and his angels were cast out of heaven. As they fell, the very fabric of the celestial realm seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. The darkness that had marred its beauty was being purged, restored to its original, pristine state. The dragon, now stripped of his power and place in heaven, plummeted towards the earth, his anguished roar echoing through the cosmos. His followers, too, were cast down, their dark forms streaking across the sky like fallen stars. In the aftermath of the battle, a profound silence enveloped heaven. The celestial host, though weary from the struggle, stood victorious. Michael, his sword still glowing with divine light, looked out over his fellow angels, their faces shining with a renewed sense of purpose and unity. It was then that a loud voice resonated through the heavens, a proclamation of triumph and renewal. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah, the voice declared, its tone imbued with a divine resonance that filled every corner of heaven. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. The angels erupted in a chorus of joyous praise, their voices harmonizing in a celestial symphony that celebrated their victory and the restoration of divine order. The once darkened skies of heaven were now ablaze with a radiant light, a testament to the triumph of good over evil. As the echoes of their celebration faded into the infinite expanse, peace and harmony were once again restored to the heavenly realm. Now on earth, Satan, filled with bitterness and rage, devised a sinister plan to corrupt God's newest creation, humanity. Transforming himself into a cunning serpent, Satan slithered into the lush garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve lived in innocent bliss. The serpent, with his beguiling charm and persuasive words, approached Eve. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? He asked, sowing seeds of doubt. Eve, curious and intrigued, replied, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, 
But God said, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. The serpent, his eyes gleaming with deceit, said, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. His words tempted Eve, and she took the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he ate it too. In that moment, their eyes were opened, and they realized their nakedness. They had fallen into sin, just as Satan had planned. Expelled from Eden, Adam and Eve faced a harsh new world. They toiled and suffered, but they also brought forth new life. They had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain, the firstborn, became a farmer, while Abel tended flocks. Both offered sacrifices to God, but God favored Abel's offering over Cain's. Fueled by jealousy and resentment, Cain became an easy target for the fallen angels, who now roamed the earth with Satan. The fallen angels, seeking to further corrupt humanity, whispered dark thoughts into Cain's mind. They fanned the flames of his envy and anger until he could no longer contain his rage. In a fit of fury, Cain lured Abel into the fields and struck him down, committing the first murder. The earth drank Abel's blood, and Cain was marked and cursed, wandering the land in restless torment. The corruption spread, and as generations passed, humanity grew increasingly wicked. The fallen angels continued their malevolent influence, leading people into deeper sin and depravity. Violence, greed, and idolatry became rampant. The world, once a reflection of divine harmony, was now a place of chaos and corruption. Yet, amid the darkness, there was a glimmer of hope. Adam and Eve, grieving the loss of Abel and the waywardness of Cain, were blessed with another son, Seth. Seth was a beacon of righteousness, a child of promise. From his birth, it was evident that he was different. The angels, knowing the importance of Seth and God's plan, watched over him, protecting him from the corrupting influences of the fallen angels. Seth grew up to be a man of integrity and faith. He walked in the ways of God, unlike the wicked generations around him. He fathered a line of descendants who, though not perfect, kept a semblance of righteousness alive in a world drowning in sin. Through Seth's lineage, the hope for humanity's redemption was preserved. The angels, led by Michael, continued their vigilance. They knew that the battle was far from over. The cosmic struggle between good and evil played out on the earthly stage, with humanity caught in the middle. Yet, the angels remained steadfast, guiding and protecting those who sought the light. As time went on, the influence of the fallen angels persisted, but so did the presence of the divine. Prophets and holy men arose, calling the people back to righteousness. The promise of a savior, a redeemer who would crush the serpent's head, echoed through the ages. This promise gave hope to those who longed for restoration and peace. In the days of Jared long before the great flood, a significant event occurred that would alter the course of human history. Two hundred angels, known as the Watchers, descended from the heavens. Their destination was the lofty summit of Mount Hermon, where they made a pact, binding themselves to a shared mission on earth. The Watchers, initially sent to observe and guide humanity, soon deviated from their divine mandate. They were captivated by the beauty of mortal women and took them as wives. This union between the celestial and the terrestrial brought forth a new race of beings, the Nephilim, giants whose stature and power were extraordinary. The Watchers did not merely defile themselves with earthly women, they also imparted forbidden knowledge to humankind. They taught humans various arcane arts, including charms and enchantments. They revealed the secrets of the natural world, such as the cutting of roots and the properties of plants. This knowledge, once hidden, gave humans new powers and capabilities, but it came with a heavy cost. The offspring of these unions, the Nephilim, were colossal beings. According to the Book of Enoch, their height was an astonishing 3,000 L's. These giants were not just tall, they were also immensely powerful and destructive. They consumed vast quantities of resources, depleting the Earth's bounty and causing suffering and scarcity among humans. The Nephilim's insatiable hunger and might led them to dominate and oppress humanity. They were a terror to behold, and their presence marked a dark era in human history. 
The land was filled with violence and corruption as the giants waged wars and wreaked havoc. The actions of the Watchers and their progeny did not go unnoticed by the Divine. The earth was becoming increasingly corrupt, filled with sin and violence, largely due to the influence of these fallen angels and their offspring. The situation was dire, and it required divine intervention. God, seeing the extent of the corruption, decided to act. He resolved to cleanse the earth of its impurities and restore the balance. This decision set the stage for the Great Flood, a cataclysmic event meant to purge the world of its sins and start anew. As the floodwaters rose, the giants, despite their immense size and strength, were powerless against the wrath of nature. They perished, along with the majority of the corrupted human race. Only Noah, a righteous man, and his family were spared, preserved to repopulate the earth and rebuild humanity on a foundation of faith and obedience to God. In the aftermath of the flood, the knowledge imparted by the Watchers was not entirely lost. Fragments of it persisted, passed down through generations, often shrouded in mystery and legend. This forbidden knowledge continued to influence humanity, both positively and negatively. Thank you for your support.